Roxo Media House. Welcome into Dissecting the Frogs, presented to you by PlayActionPools.com. I'm Maggie Hale here with Dave Bowden, our football connoisseur. And Dave, talk about a game yesterday. The Frogs are racing another 11-point halftime deficit the second week in a row. Yeah, it sure was. And the environment was spectacular right from the start. You know, with the, the blackout and they had the the end zones painted in black. I know. And then, you know, early arriving crowd, oh, right? Yeah. It was a mob to get in there before kickoff. It was nice to see. It looked, I mean, it was truly a packed house. Another, yet another so, a sellout. Yep. But you could see, I mean, there wasn't a seat to be had in the stadium. The energy was at an, uh, I mean, an all time high. And, you know, the frogs delivered. Even when the frogs got down, the energy was still there. Nobody was filing out early unless they were K State fans, that is. But before we get into that, we want to go ahead and make sure you remember we had a post-game show, a lot of special guests on there. Sonny Dykes, offensive line coach A.J. Ricker, Max Duggan, Kendra Miller, Johnny Hodges, and Jared Wiley, who we got the pleasure of speaking to. And we're going to see a lot of what Jared Wiley had in store for us in that game. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a break. The surgeon is in. Former head coach David Bowden brings his football expertise to frog fans everywhere in dissecting the frogs. Playactionpools.com. The newest sports pool hosting platform, Playaction Pools is your spot for all of your football contest needs. Whether it's a pick'em or survivor pool, Playaction has you covered against or without the spread. Be sure to check out playactionpools.com and use code FROGS today for 15% off your league. We're tied at seven. Two receivers to the right. One to the left hand side. Max. They bring pressure up the middle. Picked up. Here's Duggan with time. In traffic. Fired it out. It's caught at the 40. Play number one coming to you from quarter one. 648 on the clock. Tay Barber getting a job done with a drop back pass, but not undefended by the K State defense. However, Barber's still going to get it done. Let's go ahead and send it over to Dave to figure out how TCU made this one work. Yeah, let's take a look at this one here. TCU comes out in a wide bunch formation. Bit of an oxymoron because, you know, a bunch formation, but, uh, and I'll contradict myself even one more time, not completely wide, but the ball is on this left hash here, and they put this bunch formation on the right hash. That's where they aligned it. A lot of times when you get in a bunch formation, it's attached to the formation. This one's out on the hash. And so there's a bunch of different ways you can defend this bunch. And K-State goes with one of, one of the more... Uh, elementary ways and, and a way that people did it a lot uh, sort of back in the day before they had a bunch of variations but what they do is the safety plays the point of the bunch man to man so in this case it's Tay Barber so wherever he goes he's going to be defended man to man and then they sort of play first, what they call first in first out back here and so th this safety here regardless if it's this player or this player okay they would they would take the first one that goes in he would take the first one that goes out and so for Tay Barber here, though, he, he's in man-to-man -man coverage. He goes across the field, does a really nice job staying flat on his route. Had he drifted at all, this thing would have been interception. It was that close, but he did a great job staying flat um, and, and, and working, if anything, downhill a little bit so he can deliver. You can see what's going on here for K-State. They're going to bring six, but they actually take this free safety instead of playing straight man-to-man -man coverage – they figure, okay, the back's going to stay in, so we're not going to count for him. And, and really, this linebacker was responsible. But what you saw was you saw a cross blitz here from K-State. This linebacker had the back, Amari DiMicardo. But it, as soon as he saw that he was staying in, then he, he inserted himself in the blitz as well. This extra player over here, this was all set up because Quentin Johnson's on this side, and, and he just commands a lot of attention. So... Great job here by the Frogs picking up the blitz. We're going to get into the technique a little bit on the film, but they did a nice job in design and execution on this one. Well, we've had it drawn out for us, and now we're going to go ahead and switch to the screen. We're going to watch it, and right here, we know we have all 11 players working together, and we see Max right here. He gets this pass off, and there is a ton of K-State pressure on this. So I'm just kind of wondering how – how does he go about this? Sure, yeah. No, he does. And it's, you know, as I talked about on the board about the protection itself, right? There's one thing about having the, the, the assignment, then you need the technique to come through as well. And so, you know, I, I think when they go back and watch this film, there's a few things they can do even better. Um, they were able to give him just enough time to get it off. Of course, he took some big shots in the game. Um, it, it was tough as heck to, to bounce back each and every time. 
So they came with a, a cross blitz here. You can you can see it, and then they they delayed the linebacker. So they really brought six, okay, in a, in a true man blitz when they do that, um, bringing six guys. Daniel Green here is a guy that we talked about on facing the frogs this week, this past week with J.W. Wilson, and said, okay, this is their default default rusher at the linebacker position. These guys at 6'3", 242 pounds. So he's really like a defensive lineman, right, in, in terms of size and strength. And so they knew that was going to be a rush guy, but they brought more. They brought Austin Moore, their linebacker, as well. And we'll see this play out. I want to take a look at the end zone quickly. We can talk about technique. And you can see here, you know, on, on the right side, you know, we can do, a, I'm sure they're going to talk about sort of vertical setting and, and getting depth and staying square. The offensive lineman doesn't want to gate it, right? They don't want to open his, his uh, shoulders here. So that, that allows this defensive end, who's a terrific pass rusher, a, a better lane to the quarterback. And then Amari D. McCarty does a great job scanning. He starts off on this side. He's got that linebacker that we just referred to, Daniel Green, but he just sort of lunges just a little bit, and that and Green is able, who's also a great pass rusher, he's able to escape it and get to Max. But Max, you know, to his credit, stays on the moon and delivers a strike. Absolutely. So even without perfect protection, Max still gets that pass off. He does. And so, you know, one of the things that they talk to quarterbacks about, and Max does a really good job of this, you know, his, his offensive line and running back, they're battling and they're doing a great job for him. But, you know, he wants to have subtle pocket movements, right? Because if you think about it, if you're in the pocket w with the ball and, and you start to move, take large steps back, and, or rather either direction, two things happen. One, you're off platform. You have no balance to throw the ball and get torque in your hips and deliver it. And the other thing is, if you're, you're avoiding a rush on one side and you take a big step, well, now all of a sudden you're involved with a rusher on the other side, right? So it's all about subtle pocket movements. And Max does that, you know, does a fantastic job. He's able to deliver that. And then, you know, you see Tay Barber. You can go back to the Y just for a second. As I referred to on the board, it's really a big deal that he stays flat in this, right? He stays flat because had he drifted just slightly, this defender can step in. He doesn't have to defend the man at that point. He just gets in the passing lane, would have had an interception. So all these things working together, the entire offense, for a big play for TCU. All the things, all the things going on right here. And when we come back, we take you to the second quarter just right before half. Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Irvin Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Order the number four or number five for the tastiest lunch special under 10 bucks or order online at daveshotchicken.com. Dee McCardo in the backfield, dug it under center this time, tied into the left, man in motion, goes Quentin Johnston. They turn, Blake, they fake the hand side handoff, throw it in the back of the end zone, touchdown, catch made by the tight end, Jared Wiley. TCU has definitely mastered fakes in their plays, and this one with Jared Wiley is no different. Let's go ahead and send it over to Dave so he can draw it out and we can fully appreciate this offensive play call. Yes, Maggie, this is a real fun one here for the Horn Frogs. On the touchdown, they get down to the four-yard line. They bring Quentin Johnson in motion. Of course, he's going to command a lot of attention. Fake the jet sweep, which they've been running a lot this year. Max Duggan's actually under center. So he fakes the jet. He fakes the zone play here. And you got the whole line of scrimmage moving this way, okay, to make it look like, you know, again, sell that jet. But they also got pass protection responsibilities to their left. Our guy Jared Wiley here. Again, he comes off as he's doing the same thing. Okay, both these tight ends do it uh, as well. I believe this is Dominic Denunzio. He's coming off as he's blocking. The corner runs with this one, but everyone else steps up here. Jared's able to fake the block and then slip by him for the, for the touchdown. And this was a big one to close out the half and really ride some momentum heading in. I think this was a game changer. You sort of uh, felt as though the Frogs can get this thing back under control. They're able to do this with barely any time left in the second quarter. Let's go take a look at this one on film. And this play right here happens just 24 seconds before the Frogs and the Wildcats go into their locker rooms for halftime. And, I mean, Dave, this one was really essential for the Frogs to keep that momentum going into halftime. It's something they definitely needed. And Jared Wiley here. How's he get so open? Yeah, no, you're, you're right on, on both accounts, right? The fact that they score before going into half, sort of double dip. All good teams do that, right? Meaning score right before the end of the half and then score again coming out of the break. And so that was big for the Frogs, certainly. And then, 
you look at Jared Wiley, who's a respected blocker. You know, he's been doing a great job throughout the year. But he sort of fakes the block on this with all the stuff going on. So he's showing the block first and then sneaks behind it. And he's done, he's done a really good job at getting crafty in this. He actually does it just a little while ago, early in the game, on a play-action pass. He looks like he's going to block a linebacker, slips behind him for another big gain. I'm going to take a look at another play later on where he does the exact same thing. So something that he's becoming really good at, but you have to be a respected blocker to begin with, and he certainly is. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I think we kind of saw from him in the post-game show. Sorry, you guys just really need to watch this post-game show. Hearing from him was incredible. It definitely added to just what we saw on the field. We talked a lot about toughness. We see it here. Yeah, th there's, there's no question. There's toughness throughout this entire offense, right? And there's a lot going on here. You see uh, Quentin Johnson... You know, he's faking the jet fake, and, and of course, they, they've been setting the table throughout the entire year. They've run so much of this jet motion and also, you know, handing it off of the touch pass uh -huh. to, to the jet motion. They've run zone off of that. So they've been setting the table by running these plays, the run plays. Now, all of a sudden, when you start faking those things, mm -hmm. makes it much easier, mm -hmm. you know, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the offense. Absolutely. And movements, play fakes. From here, it looks chaotic, but Max has ample time to throw. What's going on with Mad Max? Yeah, I want to look at the, the end zone here. And so even though you've got all these play fakes going on, uh -huh. Maggie, and you've got all this movement, whether it be up in the offensive line or the, or the you know, motions, things like that, they're still all set into, it's part of the protection as well. And so I want to take a look. We'll see, as we talked about, Quentin Johnson coming in motion. So that it's a fake there, and then it's a fake to Amari DiMicardo. The rest of the line is all going to this direction, okay, to sort of sell that jet sweep, right, that we talked about. But it's also, they have that gap to their left in terms of protection. Then if you look on the right side, they keep their tackle over here so they don't have a, a soft edge and just a, a free runner at max at that time. So that's taken care of, and that's by design. And then exactly where Amari DiMicardo is going, after his fake, he's got the linebacker or anyone that shows up in that gap. So, you know, they, they're doing all these play fakes and all these things, but they make sure that they take care of Max in, in terms of the design and the, and the pass protection and all as well. So it's all tied in, it's all interwoven, and it's... It's a lot of fun to watch. No, it definitely is. And it's a lot of fun to rewatch, especially with you, Dave. Oh, well, thank And you. <laughs> right now, the Frogs are down 28-17, about to go into halftime. And you guys know the drill. When we come back, third play here in the third quarter. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. First and ten. Here's Duggan. Pumps. Now comes back over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Guess who? Tight end Wiley. Wiley takes it inside the 40, 35, and down. Jared Wiley in the opening scoring drive of the second half. Once again, making a play. And wide open. Once again. Are you starting to see a trend with this guy? Let's go ahead and send it over to Dave. We're going to take a closer look. Yeah, Maggie, you know this one just had to be sitting in Garrett Riley's bag, the offensive coordinator for TCU. They'd run a lot of these key screens throughout the, throughout the year, just kind of catch it and rip it outside, get it out to the perimeter where they like the numbers. So they show the receiver popping out, and these guys are going to go ahead and block. This is, again, Jared Wiley. I'm going to reference him, and he looks like he's going to go block out for one of these key screens. This is a quick flash fake across here, across Max's face, and so that's a, a, a quick one in the back. He does a great job turning his shoulders and pointing at the receiver. So he's here, he pump fakes, and then comes back. Jared Wiley coming off the ball here. Looks like he's going to go block for this screen. Now this safety is the only one that can make the play. But he comes over the top and sees this one here. And that leaves Jared Wiley. These guys react. That leaves him wide open. Why this safety is not in play is because, again, Quentin Johnson. This is Quentin Johnson over here. He's lined up on this side. He commands double coverage so often on this, in this play in particular the Frogs take advantage of that. They get the safety, so he's completely out of here. He actually turns his back. We'll see that on film in a second. So he's out of the play. Jared Wiley shows the block, bends it inside. Safety comes over the top. Once they go the pump fake here, comes back to Jared Wiley, and now the Frogs are rolling. And let's go take a look at this one on film. 
It's the third quarter and it's Jared Wiley again. We see a lot of now passes and screenplays from the Frogs this season. And right here, I think we kind of start to see one of those. Yeah, so that's what the defense thinks anyhow, right? And that's what the Frogs, exactly what they're trying to, to make it look like. And so, you know, this is coming back. This is now the drive. We sandwiched halftime in between two scores. And this is a drive. This is a big play. Once again, ends up to, to Jared Wiley. But it all starts with that quick fat flash fake that I mentioned on the board. That's just the running back crossing Max's face. So it's a really kind of cheap fake. And then they're going to they're gonna pump. He's going to pump the fake out here as if they're throwing the screen like they, they do time and time again, right? They want to make everything look exactly the same, except now they've got a vertical route. It looks like he's blocking, but the vertical route is out here. Jared Wiley is here, once again, looking like he's blocking, like we just talked mm -hmm. about. Does a great job at that, and then sort of bends it inside. Okay, when he does that, he really puts this safety in a bind. So this safety here has to make a decision. That becomes Max's read. So if he gets over the top of this thing, then it goes to it goes to Jared Wiley, which it does. Had he stayed on here, the ball would have went outside. Okay. And so it's a simple kind of one-two read outside, but it's set up again with pass protection, with the fake here. Great job faking here, Absolutely. faking the block. Everyone's doing their job on this play, man. Ton of great pass protection right there. Yes. And over there on the board, just so you know, I do listen to you. Over there on the board, you did say that Quentin Johnson had a big impact but he's not really in the play side of this. So where's his impact? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good question. I appreciate you listening. You're one of the, the very few, and so uh, it, it is appreciated. But if you look over here, Quinton Johnson is not involved in this play at all, like you said, but he's drawing the attention of two defenders. And so he's got the corner lined up on him. It's sort of a, a quarters-type look. Um, but you got two, def uh, two defenders for one. There's no other threat over here. The back's yeah. not to this side. There's no one else out here. And so you can just see the impact there. You get the, the safety to completely turn and flip his Absolutely. hips to the play. So it's now no clue. he's looking to the sideline. Meanwhile, everything is happening on this side here, right? And then Jerry Wiley is going to sneak behind. Because of the fakes, the linebackers are completely out of it. We've already talked about this play side safety going over the top. He made so his that pick. Read, that's right. And so normally, you know, if you didn't have the threat of a Quinton Johnson on the on that, you know, the, the opposite side, that safety would get at least be able to make the play, possibly break it up to Jared Wiley. Yeah. But because he runs over, now it's a it's a it's an easy throw to you know easy I, I, easy for me to say, but <laughs> easy throw to Jared Wiley because he's so wide open, and then he just does the rest and. You know, this really got things rolling. I think, you know, Definitely. The, the Frogs, if they continue to do this, and great teams do it, finish strong in the half, a fast start at the, at the second half, they can continue to have, you know, the, it chip away and come back from really any deficit. Absolutely. And a lot of great players on this offense. We've talked about almost all of them. And now let's go ahead. When we get back, we're going to talk about those great players on the defense. Stay with us. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Five wide, three to the left, two to the right-hand side. Four down, lineman come, steps up in the pocket as Howard throws it over the middle, is picked off, intercepted, that's Trey Tomlinson. Defense coming up big again in this play. In fact, sealing the game for the Frogs. K-State hadn't scored since the 8-18 mark in the second quarter with a Deuce Vaughn touchdown. Props to Travius Hodges Tomlinson right here for this interception. Seal the deal for the Frogs. Dave, let's go ahead and take a look at that defense. Yes, Maggie, really want to dive into this Horn Frog defense from Saturday's game. And I wish we had more plays we can go over because they, they really did a tremendous job. From the 8-18 eight, was the last time they scored in the second quarter. It was a Deuce Vaughn run. And the rest of the game, the rest of the way, they pitched a shout out. and was really made some, some really impressive Adjustments. I'm going to take a look at one here. Uh, K State was in. This is K State here on offense. Howard, the quarterback, now in. They they hurt him early. They hurt the fro frogs early in empty, throwing the ball around a little bit, throwing the ball around the yard when they had three man pressure. So this is the adjustment here. They brought a fourth rusher here. That was 
Johnny Hodges, and then they had a spy from Jamoy Hodge in the middle. And they really trusted Hodge. You could tell. They went man-free everywhere else, so this was locked up. They were man. They were man here. They were man here as well as the edge, and they had the free safety down the middle. And so across the board, they trusted the spy, and they stuck with their men. They plastered their men even when uh, um, Howard got out of the pocket. So as soon as he got out of the pocket, you saw Jamoy Hodge push to it right now to come up with the tackle here, which was, which was great. And then because Tomlinson, uh, Hodges Tomlinson stuck to his guy and undercut the route, he was able to, to make sure that he stayed with it. They all stayed disciplined. Now, had they not and, and got away from their man responsibilities, even though they had the spy, Hodges would have been able to get over the top. But again, it's trusting each other on defense. And Trey Hodges Tomlinson comes up with a key interception here. It was a big one for the Horned Frogs and really turned the tide. Can't say enough about him. Travius Hodges Tomlinson coming up with that interception right here and a risky move for the Frogs. K-State hurt him earlier in the game coming up with this empty formation. We know they made a ton of changes at halftime and we love to see it. So what kind of changes are they making here? Yeah, they, they did. They made great adjustments. Coach Sonny Dykes, as we talked to him in post game, yeah. right? He, he you know, praised uh, defense coordinator Joe Gillespie for the, the tr he said, tremendous adjustments during halftime. Absolutely. And normally they're small tweaks, right? And, and they made some overhaul changes. One of the things, like as you just said, in empty formations earlier on, uh, TCU was only was dropping eight players, really weren't getting a great pass rush. And then the backup quarterback who came in did a really nice job, frankly, you yes. know, of, of sort of dicing them up in the pass game out of empty. And so they had to bring some pressure, had to create uh -huh. some other pressure. I thought this was a great adjustment. They went ahead and rushed four guys. And so they, they here you can see Johnny Hodges creeping up. He's going to be the fourth rusher. And then they took the fifth player here, Jamoy Hodge, and then they spied the quarterback with him. So it was man coverage underneath. We've talked about man free in the past. So this is the free safety. Everyone else is playing man across the board. And, and I thought this was a, a great answer to their empty. And then now, as soon as the quarterback pulls down the ball, Jamoy Hodge triggers right now to go make the play, uh -huh. right? Because you, know, you, you don't want the spy to be passive. It's, it no. doesn't mean that you're just going to play cat and mouse all day. As soon as that quarterback commits, you got to go make a play, yeah. and Jamoy Hodge does that here. Yeah, absolutely. And explain to me right now how those numbers work. Yeah, so anytime you're going to play, it's a great question, Maggie, because, you know, everyone says, okay, go ahead and spy or go ahead and, you know, play certain coverages, but it is always a numbers game, right? And so when you play man-free coverage, you're committing six to coverage, okay? There's five receivers possible on offense. You need five players playing man-to-man. -man. Then you need a free safety on top, so that's the six players in coverage. That leaves you five guys to do something different with. You can either rush all five players, which a lot of teams do. Okay, you can rush three. Two backs, uh, linebackers stay inside and kind of take the, the running back, whatever side he comes out. You can spy, which they do on this play, right? So there's, there's, you know, there's a bunch of options, but you've only got five to play with because you're committing six to coverage. So you know, with every decision, you know, you got to know that there's going to be some consequence uh -huh. on the other end. But they do a nice job here. I thought this was a nice balance of rushing the four, so getting an extra rusher than earlier in the half when they were getting hurt with a three-man rush. Now, and now being able to also spy the quarterback. I thought it was a great adjustment, and clearly it pays off here you know, for the Frogs. Oh, absolutely, it does. And this was probably one of my favorite quarters. Ending might have been my favorite. This play, definitely one of my favorites from the game. Definitely sealed the deal for the Frogs, thanks to Travius on that interception. And when we come back, we're closing out the show. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Before we let you go, still a little bit more to talk about with TCU, such as TCU moving up one spot in the AP polls this week, sitting there at number seven. They are, and well-deserved. You know, coming off four straight 
wins against ranked opponents at the time that they played. One of only two teams in the country to, to you know, beat four ranked opponents, the other being Tennessee. And of course they had that win over Alabama. Alabama, a nice win to have. And Alabama, the only team that is not undefeated ahead of TCU. And all the teams either won this week or had a bye. They did, and, and you wanna make sure you can pick games like that all throughout the Big 12. Of course, your, your Horn Frogs as well, you wanna take them. But you can compete against the entire frogstoday.com staff, including myself and Maggie, who continues to climb in the ranks and doing Just a, like a good our job. frogs. Absolutely, so check out playactionpools.com or you can go to frogstoday.com and compete against us. If you wanna create your own office pool, of course, you can go in and use Frogs Today as a promo code and get 15% off. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and get those picks in before Saturday when the frogs go up to Morgantown, 11 a.m. kickoff. But like you said, that's kind of best case scenario. It is, you know, you don't wanna go into Morgantown and play a night game. No. I, first of all, you don't wanna go to Morgantown at all. No. But if you have to be there, you certainly wanna play a night game. That's a, that's a tough environment. So I think best case, you know, for the frogs, it's always gonna to be tough though, that road trip is difficult and there's no weeks off in the Big 12. Yeah. I, you know, they they got uh, kind of taken to the woodshed by Texas Tech last week, uh, West Virginia did, but you never know in this, this conference, it's week to week, any team can win. And so they got to stay on top of things. And I think, you know, continue to do what they're doing in terms of one week at a time, one day at a time, one practice at a time. And, and Coach Sonny Dex has been preaching that uh -huh. and clearly, that message is getting through the team. Oh, it definitely is. And that energy up there in Morgantown on game day, enough to make an NFL team choke. But the Frogs love some adversity, and I'm sure they're ready for a little bit of a bigger crowd that might not be the Frog fans. Ready to play out, see what happens up there. And Frogs Today has you covered all week this week. We've got Facing the Frogs. Dave's on that one with Jamie. And we've also got State of the Frogs. That's Sunny Dykes. We've got Frogs Today coming to you Wednesday and Friday and a bunch more. You're gonna wanna be here for all the coverage. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave us a comment of what you liked about the show, what you didn't. I'm sure it was Dave's hair today and not mine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Roxo Media House.